but I have my free will. The Mormon church tells me that my free will is the greatest gift ever, but we're also taught to give our free will back to God and obey all of the rules of Mormonism. And go, Mace, did yeah, you have a I, comment? I was just thinking that one of the things that I've taught certainly many times and have thought to my to, for myself was that the only thing that God would never take from us is our free will or our agency, but that's the one thing he asks us to give him. And it's a very common idea in Mormonism. If you look at it from the perspective of a persuasive piece of information meant to essentially take your free will from you, it really does fall into that category of things. And so just being able to step back and see it from a different perspective, it doesn't mean you can't live in that organization still. It just means that you recognize more closely what's going on there so that you can protect you and and make sure you're doing what it is that you want to be doing rather than what someone else has told you you need to do. Right. And we're going to be giving, when we dig into undue influence at our next episode, we're going to be giving several examples um, of more modern day teachings. Like the first one that comes to mind is a talk recently by Bednar about yeah, baptismal exist, covenant. Right. right oh, agency doesn't yeah. exist. Right. The baptismal covenant stuff. And so we really, we're going to really dig into this deeper at future right, episodes. Right, on the next episode, is that's the plan, yeah. Yeah, the next episode is going to be really digging into undue influence and giving some solid examples. But one of the things that Stephen says here, again, still reading in this first paragraph, now I'm in the second sentence, people can be unduly influenced by deception, flattery, trickery, coercion, and other techniques, including hypnosis. And when I read this and I think about troubling Mormon history and why the Mormon church has not come out and said, yes, this is a thing. So Mason, you've said many times your one of your biggest issues with the Mormon church is not taking accountability for hiding the truth. And what I'm reading right here on the cults and one of the primary ways in which I would identify Mormonism as a cult is that we are unduly influenced by deception in the sense of, well, we kept that troubling history away from you because we didn't want it to negatively impact your testimony. And so by lying by omission and oftentimes by commission, we didn't know. We weren't able to truly judge the character of, say, Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon church, because some of the sticky, icky things that he did was kept from us and is still being right. kept from us. And then when right. they finally come out and admit it, they say, well, yes, this happened, but let me explain to you how it could mean. And so there's that coercion. There's that I don't trust you Mason Westbrook to make your own opinion about what this sticky history means. Therefore, I'm going to give you a portion of the facts and then I'm going to, you know, quote unquote, whitewash the interpretation of that to keep you from thinking for yourself on those issues. Yeah, there's a lot of power and this is kind of how I feel like this works. Um, there's a lot of power in saying, I need you to accept this idea first. I need you to make it a piece of who you are. In this case, you're talking about Joseph Smith or the Book of Mormon or even Jesus Christ for a lot of religions or, or Allah. I need you to accept this idea that these are real and true and vital to who you are and to your future. Once you've accepted that piece, it's a lot easier for them to kind of sort of work in the details. Well, yeah, maybe that happened. Maybe this happened. Let's just kind of deal with it. And you're already committed. So you, you try and deal with things rather than saying, look, this is, for this example, this is who Joseph Smith was. This is what he did. These are the parts that we feel are terrific. These are the parts that we feel not so good. Um, but you don't get the whole picture in order to accept him as a prophet. You get this little picture that seems incredible. You accept him as a prophet, and then we can kind of work through all the rest later. Right. Right. And or or things like we excuse the the bad things 
away and blame it on God. 